All right, I'm gonna do a video on installing one of these Castle BECs inside this kit right here. Um, I put a couple of these in two other kits. Uh, I have two Axial kits I installed these on and had uh, some good luck with. Now I'm gonna install one in here and I posted one of the groups that I was gonna install it. Some folks asked if I could show how. A couple videos out there anyway, but since I'm doing it, I'll go ahead and make a video. So what's the benefit of one of these? So your electronic speed control in your kit usually provides voltage and amps to your receiver, which then powers your servos, lights, whatever else you got. Um, in this case, the uh, Team Orion um, speed control in this Kyosho kit puts out six volts at three amps. Um, a lot of your, most of your ESCs are anywhere from five to six volts and they'll be anywhere from two to three amps output. What this does is this bypasses the speed control, hooks direct to the battery and provides voltage direct to the receiver through this BEC. So what you do is you disconnect what this speed control is giving out to the receiver and you use this instead. Um, you can set this from anywhere from four volts up to 12 volts, all right? So I'm gonna set it the same as the Team Orion at six volts, but the nice thing about this is it puts out 15 amps versus the three amps that the internal uh, speed control puts out. And the reason for doing that is I bought this Savox uh, 1210 SG. This is a high torque servo, steel gears. This servo, to get uh, your maximum torque and power out of it, Savox says you need at least five amps to run the servo. And so, since the internal BC and the speed controller will provide five amps, um, you can install one of these. It gives it up to 15 amps. It's going to give it whatever um, current draw it needs. And you're gonna get really good use out of this and you're no longer using the BEC on the speed control. So that's the rundown on why you would wanna put one of these in here. So how do you put one in? All right, so I got these parts laid out before I get to the soldering. So the way this works, um, so the BEC needs to be connected direct to the battery. And what you have here is you have your uh, positive and negative leads leading direct to the uh, BEC. Um, one of my other kits is a uh, 2S kit, and all I did was solder them direct to the Dean's plug. I put you know, the red to red, black to black, put new uh, heat shrink on it, and I was good to go. Um, because this kit is a 4S kit, and this thing will take up to 60 volts, um, it'll take a lot of power input. Um, I'm going to solder it direct to the leads right here, and I've already pulled the heat shrink off. Um, and so basically I'm going to solder those right onto these contacts right here and then just put new heat shrink tape right back on top of those. So this way, uh, when the two batteries are hooked up, it's going to get that, uh, 4S power. Um, so you're looking at about 15 volts in, and then this can manually be set to six volts back out at 15 amps. Um, one of the other things I did was I pulled out the red lead on the ESC that goes to the receiver. So the white and black are your signals for the ESC to talk to the receiver. All this red line is, is your BEC. And so since this ESC is putting out uh, six volts at three amps, you can't do that and this, you'll end up burning up the receiver. So the best thing to do is pull that red line out of the uh, tab right there and just put a little bit of heat shrink on that. And when you plug this back into the receiver, you're no longer using the BEC from the speed controller. This has two leads on it, and both of these will plug into your um, ESC to provide the power. So one of the downfalls here is you're gonna need at least a three channel. So one of these can go into the third channel, and then one of these I'll use the uh, bind port. And these two together will provide the uh, 15 amps of power needed um, coming from the BEC. So what you gotta do next is do some soldering. All right, so I got everything soldered up. Um, not gonna make a video of me soldering. That's kind of boring if you don't know how to solder. Uh, might wanna have someone else do this for you. So what I've done now is the uh, BEC, I have the positive and negative leads soldered on the end of the bullets that go into the ESC. So now this BEC is gonna get power direct from the battery. And I went ahead and uh, got the heat shrink tubing on there. And then, as I said before, I went ahead and put a little piece of heat shrink tubing on the end of this uh, power lead. And I can just kind of hang there in the uh, receiver box, not gonna hurt anything. 
So now when I plug these leads into my ESC and I put this whole thing back in the truck, I'll mount this back in the truck and I'll double-sided tape the uh, BEC inside the truck and I'll plug these into the receiver. So now the electronic speed control will no longer provide power to the receiver. All the power for the receiver servo is coming from this BEC now. And we're keeping that power from the speed control coming because we've removed the power strip here from this line. So the white and black will give all the signal to the ESC as it did previously. So let's get this, uh, let's get all this mess back inside the truck. So I got everything wired up and put back together. Um, clean up all the wires, zip tied everything. Everything's back where it needs to be. Let's take a look. So you're gonna hear a, you're gonna hear that noise there, hear that noise? These digital high torque servos are noisy. It's basically anytime any type of tension is put on them, they wince like that. Nothing, it's normal. You're not hurting it. They're just, they're constantly trying to recenter because of digital servo. Um, so I relocated the uh, Vortex EEC to the back of the truck, give myself a little more space. You see here, here are the two power leads coming off the uh, battery lines, going right to the external BEC. This BEC is now going to the receiver, got the new servo installed. So right now the ESC is off, it's not even turned on. Um, as soon as you plug the batteries in, that external BEC fires up. It's now powering the servo over here, so it's nice and clean inside. So you guys can see here, I got uh, no throttle because the, the ESC is off, right? The motor's not powered at all. Everything right now is being powered by the BEC. I got that nice high torque slave box servo. The uh, Vortex EC in there was giving up six volts at three amps, and I dialed the uh, Castle BC to come in at six volts at up to 15 amps. So now you get a lot of power to that that new servo in there. So we got a really nice setup, easy to install. You know, they're about 30, 40 bucks, depending where you find them. This is a waterproof one, so they're usually closer to $40. And um, the whole thing took me about, other than setting up the soldering and cleaning up the workspace, about 20 minutes to get everything installed, All right? Nice steel gear, high torque servo, powered directly off the batteries. Not bad, let me know if you have any questions.